this video is on two questions, three and four. Now, what you want to notice is when you get to question three, it's a little bit shorter, and question four is a lot shorter. Now, you're not going to see short questions, but I'm still going to go over them because they cover material you need to know. I will once again also be pointing out the parts of the question which would not be um, applicable and that you should not be doing on the exam. So at high temperatures, N2 and O2 can react to produce nitrogen monoxide. NO is represented by the equation above. Write the expression for Kp. All right, remember when you're doing equilibrium constants, you, you do not use brackets for pressure. All right? So you, you write basically you use something like a PNO. And if there's a coefficient, you're going to put that to a power. Remember, it's products over reactants. But don't do brackets. You will lose points. I'm sure of it. Okay? And then you can put you can put like a third power or you can put like a square up here, whatever you want. And that's okay. Right? Everybody will know what you're doing. And you can put, you know, products over reactants, that type of thing. A student inject. Now, I'm seeing when you once you've got a K in here and you've got an expression, I'm feeling ice. All right. Let's see. The student injects N2 and O2 in the previous evacuated rigid vessel, raises the temperature to 2000 Celsius. As the temperature increases, the partial pressure to N2 and O2 of 6.01 and, and that gives you the pressure. OK, so it gives you the pressure of this thing at equilibrium. It gives you initial pressures of both these things. So it's saying do an ice table. Remember. If there's a coefficient, it's, it's co if the coefficient is 2, it's changing by 2x. If the coefficient is 3, it's changing by 3x, right? So keep that in mind, and you have to figure out whether it's going up or down. And they a lot of times don't tell you that something's starting at 0. If they don't mention it was put in the vessel, it's starting at 0, all right? Now, the next part of the question says as follows. Nitrogen can can undergo reaction. Okay, so now the next part says pK. As soon as I know, we're done with this. Not even going to bother explaining this. It would take too much time. So questions C and D and E involve making buffers. So we're going to skip those questions. All right. And we're going to go directly to the next question. Student investigates various dyes using paper chromatography. OK, remember chromatography, you've got a... Um, mobile phase and a stationary phase, and you've got basically a solute and a solvent, right? So the solvent is going to travel up the, the paper or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be paper. There's lots of types of chromatography, but in every case, there'll be a mobile state, okay? And the, in this case, the mobile phase is a nonpolar solvent, which tells you something. Whatever travels with it or sticks to it is also the least polar or the most nonpolar of the solvent. So, and it gives you an unknown. Now, in the questions they're asking you here, right, they ask which dye is least polar. So least polar means this. You've got three dyes. It's basically multiple choice with three choices, and you have to justify it. You've got B, A, and you've got C. And I won't give the answer, but the one that went the furthest was C, and it's in a nonpolar solvent. The one that went the shortest distance, right, uh, was B. It's not going to be A, right? And remember, like dissolves like. The solvent is nonpolar, so whatever went furthest had to be what, right? Then it says, which dye is present in the unknown sample? In this case, what they've done here is they kind of messed it with it a little bit by making the solvent front go different distances. However, if the unknown sample is one of those dyes, it should have the same RF value. Now, clearly there's no numbers here. But you can make your own scale to justify this and determine RF values like you did before on the test and determine which one has a the same RF value as the unknown. Whichever one has the same RF value as the unknown using an arbitrary scale that is the same for both um, developed chromatograms, that will be what your own unknown is. But you need to justify it. And my guess is most kids right off the bat, pick the right answer for the unknown. But their justification probably was poor. Use the, understand the RF value. Remember, an RF value is the distance that the solute move, the solute being the unknown or one of the dyes, over the distance that the solvent moved. And it's just a, it's just a, and the solvent moved a certain distance. You can actually just go like one. You can say, oh, the solvent in the first, second one moved about two centimeters you know, whatever, or two units, right? How far did the solvent move in the first one? How far did the, did the die that you, the unknown die move? And get a value. 
and compare it to the value of, one, of the other three dies and justify it that way. 